Hi, I'm Paul Worrell, uh, founder and chief developer of Zonified. Today is Monday the 4th of June 2018 and um, I just have a uh, short run of making a payment um, uh, on Ethereum, a payment in ETH. Um, we today started uh, returning some of the early funds that we had betrothed to us um, for the ICO and uh, in our contracts uh, which were written contracts not smart contracts um, to those early funders we um, had said we would return the funds if we didn't proceed with the ICO um, which is essentially with the ERC20 contracts and the crowdfunding contracts surrounding those uh, generally they return the funds if the minimum uh, or, the, or the low cap um, is not met well as we uh, have not yet proceeded with that ICO uh, we feel it's only fair to, to return um, those funds as per the written contract as we've not delivered any tokens so um, anyway it just reminded me how um, uh, complicated it is uh, and confusing it can be so having refreshed my memory about how to go about doing it I just did a quick screencast and it might be useful for you okay let's run through making a payment okay so I'm going to use my etherwallet.com um, first thing we should do is check the SSL certificate I always do that I'm um, just check that it looks like it is my etherwallet.com and um, it's verified by a respectable cert um, yep yeah, it is that's fine um, they're already warning us uh, we should bookmark the URL make sure we don't get fished um, and advising we install possibly a plugin to help with avoiding getting fished but we're going to use a hardware wallet Trezor so I'm comfortable that um, as long as we're using the right URL um, we should be safe so I've got the hardware wallet plugged in um, and I'm going to connect to it I'm not covering how to use a Trezor wallet here um, so anyway I'm looking at my device they have a cute way of helping randomize the numbers for the pin um, okay so what am I seeing here okay I have to start entering the pin obviously you um, shouldn't see that okay right there we go so um, entering that pin hopefully that's correct okay now this is where things seem to get very complicated for ordinary people um, there's something called a HD derivation path um, by default it happens to be the one that we want but there are quite a few others um, um, why we need to see them all all the time i don't know we're just interested in this one the trezor uh, uh, supporting the trezor wallet and it is the default uh, we could enter a custom path if we had wanted to um, but that's all very advanced um, so what we're going to do is move some ETH from one address to another in our wallet. So I'm going to choose the first address that appears in this wallet, which has a balance of 0.04164 blah 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 ETH. Um, token balances could be shown here, um, but that's a bit more complicated for the wallet to achieve. Um, so it's not. So we're going to unlock this wallet. This is the address that we've picked. Um, you can actually use the display address on Trezor. When you click that, the address appears on your Trezor and you can just check that that is the, um, the, the right address so you know it's not um, spoofed in the, in, the, in, the, in the website itself. We're checking the balance again, 0.04, 0.4164019. Um, if we wanted to, we could go and have a look on Etherscan um, to see uh, the record. On the blockchain itself uh, for this address there you go so um, you know the balance that was displayed by the wallet wasn't kept 
in the wallet itself. It's, it's actually the balance from the blockchain and this particular, uh, the blockchain will always know a balance against any particular address. And we can also go and have a look at transactions that may have happened with this address in the past. Okay, but what we want to do is um, pop in here a destination address. Um, let's send, I don't know, 0 0.01 ETH. Um, we can go with this default gas limit for now, as I'm not going to explain these details at the moment. So what we do is we generate a transaction and that's going to ask the hardware wallet. Um, you can't see it, I appreciate that. Um, but I'm able to then just follow some instructions to check that the recipient address is correct and uh, confirm that I'm happy to sign um, a transaction for this. And then that transaction, after being signed on this remote hardware device, um, appears here. This is technically the data structure uh, that forms the raw transaction. And on the right here is the actual signed transaction. So effectively, a little bit like an email really, that, that, that's a data uh, payload that describes uh, a movement of funds from one address to another and uh, provides other technical detail um, that's, uh, that's required. Um, in particular, as I move down this list, uh, the node where the um, data package is gonna be sent and um, uh, a nonce that's required, um, which, which sort of stops duplication of uh, um, uh, transactions. So yes, I'm really happy with that, off it goes. So as I say, a bit like an email, that data package has been sent to a node and the node will stick it on a, a queue, um, make it available to the network for uh, processing. And here we can, uh, go and verify the transaction or check the transaction status. Um, whenever we submit something to a node or to the blockchain, we get a transaction uh, a number back. You can see it there in that dialogue. That's called a transaction hash. Now at the moment, um, it's still sort of being processed. So we're not getting to see a, a, a transaction and we're not able to even verify the transaction. It's kind of stuck um, so I'm just gonna just poke around here a little bit um, until we suddenly get um, a valid status um, click 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 let's refresh this hmm. okay so we, we, we're just sort of waiting and trying to kick it into action in a second, it will suddenly do it. That's coming through this way. Ah, is this it? There you go. So now that just directed us to Etherscan. You can now see that that transaction uh, is there and it, uh, it's it's received and actually it's processed and it's had one block confirmation. Let's go and have a look at the other side. So now it's saying transaction has been found and confirming that the transaction has been accepted. Okay. So when we look at Etherscan, um, we can see all the details of this transaction. And um, it's got one block confirmation. I think if we refresh, we'll find that that was already updated. There you go, four. Okay, so that means it's, it's been submitted. The transaction has been processed. Um, a node has, has mined it into a block and we're already four block uh, um, f four blocks down the road um, from having this transaction accepted. So if we now whip back to the Trezor wallet and see if we can see the credit on the other address. Ah, so we're not seeing that yet. Um, the wallet itself is reaching out to the blockchain to get um, uh, to get that balance, because if we click it and go and have a look at Etherscan, which is where it's getting it from, we can see it was 0.1 ETH, uh, 0.01 ETH, but it's still not updating. Um, 
Okay, there's nothing clever going on here. It's just out of sync. So let me... Let me um, just, you know, reconnect to the... Tre ah, there you go. So if I reconnect to the Trezor, um, it, it, it obviously must have cached it. So uh, it does reflect that uh, there's a 0 0.01 uh, balance. Um, oh, I've gone and selected the default, which was the sending address there. Let's go back, go back to the wallet. Let's get rid of these tabs. Go back to... Um, the Trezor wallet. So I've got to view the wallet info. Okay, so I'm viewing the wallet info and uh, now I need to make sure I pick that address. Unlock the wallet. Um, okay, and now this is the recipient address clearly showing 0.01 ETH balance. Um, and fundamentally that is about it. We've done the job.